Okay, this is going to be part two of the geometry review covering all of these topics. Again, here are the formulas that are on the formula charts, front and back, in case you need to come back and look at these as you're trying to work some of these problems. Okay, we're picking up here on this question number eight. It says that you have a storage shed with a rectangular sides, a roof in the shape of a half cylinder. Both sides and the roof of the shed are to be painted. The dimensions of the shed are shown below. Find the total area of the surfaces to be painted to the nearest square foot. All right, so we are trying to paint the sides. So uh, they're referring, they're talking about the left and right sides of the shed. So here is one of them. The other is going to be exactly the same. We just don't see it. So we're going to find this one and multiply by two. Okay. Um, and then they're also going to paint the roof of the shed. So this half a cylinder, okay, but it's only the lateral because they didn't say they're painting the front or the back, just the roof. So we are talking about surface area. The roof is a cylinder. So the formula for lateral surface area of a cylinder, we're talking about lateral because it's just the roof portion, not the front and the back. Okay, so the roof portion is 2 pi r h. That's the lateral surface area of a sphere. But we are only taking half because it's only this top. The bottom is not included. So the radius of our circle is given in the picture as 3. Height is the distance from one base to the other of a solid. So from the front to the back, that's this distance, which is 5. And we take half once we get that. So when you calculate this, uh, you can type this all at once in your calculator if you'd like, or you can do it um, piece by piece. It really doesn't matter. You get approximately 47.12 uh, units. This is in feet, so this is feet squared. And then the sides are rectangles. So area of a rectangle is just length times width or base times height. And this rectangle is 5 by 8.5. And you do um, 5 by 8.5 and, and get 42.5. But remember, there's the left and the right side. So you multiply by 2. And you get 85 square feet. So then you just get your grand total by adding those together. for 132.12 square feet. And um, actually, they said round to the nearest square foot, so this would just stay as 132 square feet. Okay, on this next problem, you're given a pyramid arena in Memphis, Tennessee, has a slant height of 133 meters, a square base with side lengths of 180 meters, and the external surface of the pyramid, excluding the floor, is covered in stainless steel. How much stainless steel covers the lateral surface area of the pyramid? How many cubic inches are inside the pyramid? So two questions in one here. First one is lateral surface area, because we're not including the base. The floor is not covered in stainless steel. So we'll work that out first. So lateral surface area is 1 half PL. And you have to remember that P stands for perimeter of the base. So our base is a square, so the perimeter of a square is just the side length times 4. So that gives you 720. Slant height is what that L stands for, and slant height is given as 133. So if we plug in here, 720 and 133, you get that the lateral area, this is how much stainless steel they'll need, is... 47,880, our units are in meters, so area is meters squared. So that's the amount of stainless steel. Volume is what this question is asking. How many cubic inches are inside? When you're talking about filling something up, we're talking about volume. So volume of a pyramid is one-third BH, where B stands for area of the base. So again, the base is a square. Area of a square is side length squared, or you could do length times width. Either way, you're doing 180 times 180, and you're getting 32,400. 
Okay, H is the height from the center of the base to that common vertex. This is height. And in here, the slant height and the height and halfway across the base form a triangle. I'll draw it out here since it's hard to see at that angle. Okay, so we have the height, the slant height, and halfway across the base. This is not 180. A common mistake is to put 180 here. 180 is all the way across. This is halfway, so this would be 90. So you have to use Pythagorean theorem here to solve for H. So your A and B are the legs. 133 is the hypotenuse. Okay, when you solve this out and subtract it over and then take the square root, I'm just saving time here by not showing you all those steps, you get 97.92 approximately. So when I go back to my formula, I found area of the base to be 32,400 and I found height to be 97.92. So my volume comes out to a really big number, 1,057,536. And this is in meters, but these are cubic meters because we're talking about volume. This one gives you a pipe in the shape of a cylinder with a 30 inch diameter is to go through a passageway shaped like a rectangular prism. The passageway is three feet high, four feet wide, six feet long. How many cubic inches of insulation material or insulating material are needed to fill the space around the pipe? So we want to know what's left, okay? This is one of our composite volume questions where we're subtracting. So we need the volume of the prism and we need the volume, which is area of the base times the height, and we need the volume of the cylinder, which is area of the base, in this case it's a circle, so pi r squared times height. All right, so let's talk about the prism first. Notice you have feet and inches for measurements. They're asking for your answer in cubic inches. We want to convert everything to inches then before we even start. So hopefully you know there's 12 inches in a foot. So for the feet to inches, you just multiply by 12. So 6 times 12, okay, that's going to give you instead of 6 feet, You'll write that as 72 inches. 3 times 12 is 36 inches. And 4 times 12 is 48 inches. Okay, so now we can plug in to our volume formula. Our base here is a rectangle, okay? And so really it's just length times width times height. So you're doing all three measurements of 36 by 72 by 48, and you get a grand total of 124,416, and this is in inches cubed. Now let's um, look at the cylinder. So if the diameter is 30, that means the radius is 15. So we have pi 15 squared. Now the height is the distance from one base to the other. So this length here, which we said is 72 inches. Make sure you're plugging in 72, not six, because we are using inches. So that gives you approximately 50,000 893.8 cubic inches. Now again, they want to know the insulation material, so that's in between, okay? So that's the difference, so we subtract. So 124, 416 minus 5893.8, and that leaves you with 73,000 522.2 cubic inches of insulation material needed. OK, 
Okay. This one tells us we have a path below with a hypotenuse of 3.25. Well, hypotenuse tells me this is a 90 degree angle. And about how long is each leg of the triangle? What's the approximate distance around the triangle? Round your answers to the nearest hundredth. You're supposed to be told that this is isosceles, that these are equal. Okay, so go ahead and mark that. So here, when you have isosceles triangles, you can use uh, your 45, 45, 90. You can use trig. Or you could even use Pythagorean theorem if you realize that A and B would be equal to each other. So there's plenty of ways to solve this. Um, I'll show you uh, using the 45, 45, 90 first. If you remember those formulas are x, x, and x squared of 2. So across from the 90 is 3.25. So under 90 is 3.25. That means that these are equal to each other. It does not mean x is 3.25. It means x squared of 2 is 3.25. So I'm going to solve for x. When I'm solving for x here, I need to get rid of this square root of 2. It is being multiplied by x. So the opposite operation is to divide. So 3.25 divided by square root of 2 is approximately 2.3. And that is x, the length of the legs. So that's one of your answers. Uh, the approximate, uh, how long is each leg? So 2.3 would be that answer. But then they also ask for the distance around the triangle. So if each of these was 2.3, then they just want perimeter. So you would say 2.3 plus 2.3 plus 3.25 and get a distance of approximately 7. 0.85. These are both measured in nautical miles. I'm just going to abbreviate with NM. All right, now if you wanted to do it with trig, which I think I would do because I think trig's easier than special right triangles, just pick one of your angles. It doesn't matter which one and label it. So we've got this one is 45. And I'm looking for this opposite side and I know the hypotenuse side. O and H is sine. So sine of the 45 degree angle is opposite, unknown, over hypotenuse, 3.25. When you know the bottom piece, you just multiply it over. So 3.25 times sine of 45 is equal to the opposite side. Okay. Make sure when you're putting this into your graphing calculator, when you do any trig, sine, cosine, or tangent functions, that your calculator is set in the correct mode. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, so here's mode. And right here, there's radian and degree. Make sure degree is the one highlighted. If radian is highlighted, if it looks like this, then you just scroll down and over and hit enter. And then it's in degree mode. And you're good to go. Okay, but that's important or you'll get the wrong answer. So you do 3.25 times sine of 45 and you get the same answer, approximately 2.3. And then when you add them all up, you would get the same answer here.